Well, bless the Lord, brothers and sisters. So happy to be back yet again. I know, I know it's been, what, a week, a week and a half since you've heard a video from me. And I believe that this very video can potentially help you, okay? I want to help you. That's the goal, okay? I'm not a preacher or a pastor. I don't get caught up in titles. I want God's people to be set free, sane, and sanctified. Not through me but through Christ Jesus. So we give all the glory and the honor today and each and every day to Christ. Why? Because he paved the way for us. And if he has gone through the physicality of knowing what temptation is and abandonment is and struggles are in a lot of different things that we go on through day to day, he is the master he is the one that you should put all of your trust and your emphasis in, in terms of getting this stronghold out of your life. Yes, today I want to talk, brothers and sisters, about getting free from that pacifier that's not benefiting your life, that stronghold of habitual sin. There's a lot of people out there that watched the video that I made about masturbation. In fact, I believe it was upwards of 54,000 people. In fact, I didn't even think, to be honest, that the video would do that great. Maybe 100 people I thought were viewed, but 54, did you hear me? I said 54,000 of you listening all over the world heard that video that I made about masturbation. If you hadn't checked it out, check it out. It's pretty profound. And I believe that if you don't dissect this and visualize this from a spiritual perspective, your masturbation problem, then you're going to keep going round and round and round the cycle of habitual sin. Oh, yeah. You, step one, you cannot become free of this masturbation if you don't want to. That's step one. You have to have what? A made up mind to become free. Okay. You also have to realize that God is not pleased with this. Okay. So first, you know, you have a made up mind. You know, God is not pleased. You also have to realize, brothers and sisters, that you cannot do this on your own. Okay. A lot of you out there, you know, I get a lot of comments and I believe this is the driving force of this message. I'm getting a lot of comments. A lot of back and forth. I'm reading people trying to minister to other people regarding masturbation. And I think that's a wonderful thing because I can't do this alone. I'm just one woman out of this whole universe that's trying to help God's people. One woman. But when I see the brethren trying to, you know, step in and encourage the other brethren and help other brethren out and sisters and just I think that's a beautiful thing. I think that's a beautiful thing and I wanted to piggyback on that just a little bit more in terms of just getting the grips and the understanding as to why so many people year after year after year you could be starting I don't know masturbation at what seven god forbid and then all the way upwards to 70 who knows everybody out there if you know anything about masturbation or if you experienced it firsthand knows that there is a pleasure that is a tribute to masturbation okay that's the reason why a lot of people overeat because there's a pleasure what that's attached to it okay if it wasn't a pleasure that was attached to it i don't think that you will be doing it over and over and over and the same thing with drugs the same thing with any addiction there's a pleasure a chemical pleasure that's being ignited at that time so in order to realize that this is a problem you have to realize why it's a problem right because you say to yourself it feels good it makes me feel great why is it a problem? Well, when you are driven solely on the pleasure principle, I think Janet Jackson had a song years ago, the pleasure principle. You remember that? When you're driven in life on the pleasure principle of a thing, right? Anything, anything, I don't know, making money or cheating on a spouse, whatever. If you're driven by the pleasure, the flesh, when the flesh is self-gratified, when the flesh 
flesh is the driving force, right? It becomes a God. Amen. Are y'all ready for this? When the flesh operates you instead of you operating it, that's when every single decision that you're going to make is not going to be a sound decision. It's not going to be a spiritual decision. It's going to be a sinful decision. So let's just break this down. Why is masturbation a sin, right? Feels great. I enjoy doing it. Not me particularly. And don't get it twisted. I'm just speaking from people who are doing it. I'm just talking in that perspective. Please don't get it twisted. Have I masturbated before? I think that's... (laughs) I think that's the, 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 the question, how I can submit it. Yes, I had struggled with masturbation in the past. Do I masturbate now? Absolutely, positively not. In fact, I made a comment with someone before and I told them it literally is as if that desire has been frozen and cut off and dead from my life. That's the only way that I can describe it. The desire to even do it is is gone. Like you ever have a brain fog or a brain freeze, like you're trying to get words out and they're blank, they're no longer there. That's how it is for me. It just doesn't come, it's just gone. It's just like forgetting your name. It's not there anymore. And I know that I am delivered. That's how, brothers and sisters, you know that you are delivered from masturbation exclusively a hundred percent no turning back for sure for sure for real for real yes that's how you know when you literally not only you don't think about it but just doing the act is frozen it's it's like not having that body part there anymore to do that task okay now let's don't let don't let it get twisted do I have sexual urges to make love to my husband this that and the third Do we have sex? Absolutely, positively, okay? But in terms of masturbation, it's not there. So getting off of me, getting off of Samantha Hicks, I'm talking about you now. How can you become set free? How can you get to the point and the place in your walk with God in your life where that's no longer an issue? Prime example, Satan knows, hear me, what you like. Satan knows that he can't trip you up with things that you like. Satan knows he can't trip you up with things that are no longer a stronghold or an appetite to your life. Satan knows that I don't smoke weed anymore. I don't smoke uh, cigarettes. Now, when I say I don't smoke weed anymore, in my whole life, I probably smoked weed three times. I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. It made me choke. It made me cough. Didn't like it. Cigarettes, I probably smoked maybe three cigarettes in my life. Not the whole thing, just the puff puff, choked on it, same thing. So when I smell cigarettes particularly, it makes me want to gag. It makes me sick. I don't like it around me. I don't like I don't I, I like everything clean around me. Okay, I'm one of those people who clean the house maybe a lot. Because <laughs> I like my house clean. Where am I going with this masturbation things? Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. Promise you I am. Satan knows he cannot tempt you with things, hear me, that you're not interested in. So if you are interested in sexual sin, right, he's going to bring it back up. Now, now, I do not drink anymore. I haven't drank alcohol in close to 10 years, right? But unlike cigarettes, when I used to drink here and there, right, I enjoyed it. But I drank maybe, what, if anything, five times a year, if anything, maybe. So I wasn't a drinker drinker. But the taste, hear me, I enjoyed. So every now and again, when my coworkers may talk about a, a wine uh, factory or wine vineyard that they're going to, innately, I'm like, ooh, innately, I got to do some warfare because I know, well, I'm going to get to the masturbation stuff. Calm down. I see a lot of people like, this is too clean for me. Relax. 
So, so when she talks about my coworker going to a winery, innately I'm like, ooh, in the back of my head, I'm like, ooh, I wanna go. Maybe I just take a little sip here and a dip there. Ooh, I feel kind of left out. What would that be like? I've never gone, I'm intrigued. And in that instance, right, I have to what? Do warfare and cast what? Down those imaginations. I have to cast those imaginations down because I remember that unlike cigarettes, I enjoyed it. So being that I enjoyed it, I gotta realize, guess what? I also didn't enjoy the fact of when I got drunk, uh -huh, the time in New York, I drank a little bit too much and end up in emergency room and could have died of alcohol poisoning. So that brings, that sobers me up. That sobers my mind up to know that, guess what? This is not for you. Because if you drink a little bit too much, you can potentially die and then ultimately that's Satan's goal anyway. Whatever your stronghold or vice is, Satan wants you to be what? Enslaved to it. He wants you to be enslaved and he wants you to want it so much that when you eat, sleep and drink it, all you do is are gonna be saturated with that very thing. So in order to be set free, right, we have to disconnect the pleasure principle. Oh man, we're getting some weight, just calm it down. The pleasure principle, right, is the driving force as to why you do what you do. Now, when my daughter was younger, she sucked the pacifier like it was going out of style. It was to the point where it was becoming an embarrassment. She was getting to the age of, you know what, it's not cute anymore. You know, it was cute when you was little, but you know, you're about three, maybe three and a half. You, you know, you gotta get it out. You're walking, you're talking, get that out of your mouth. I don't remember the age exactly, but it was to the point where she could hold conversations. And if you can hold conversations, you don't need no pacifier in your mouth, right? Same thing with your body. If you can hold intelligent conversations, you should realize that this stronghold is not intelligent for your life. You're smarter than that, right? So what did I have to do? She loved it. She enjoyed it. She looked forward to sucking the pacifier. It wasn't enough for me to put hot sauce on it. It wasn't enough for me to hide the pacifier. It wasn't even enough for me to scold her and say, if you pick that up one more time, one more time, you're going to get it. It wasn't enough. She still desired it. She still found herself with it in her mouth. You still desire masturbation. You still have that taste in your mouth to do it. So what is it gonna take? Well, I had to talk to her on a logical level. And I had to explain to her, I understand that you enjoy it. I understand the pleasure it brings, but there's other people that are your age and don't you wanna be a big girl about this? I'm going to give this pacifier to you and I'm going to allow you to throw it out. And of course, it was more pep talk within that. I don't want to keep you bored. But I gave her the opportunity to make the decision on a logical level for herself, right? I can't force you to stop masturbation, listener. I can't twist your arm, come visit you in your house, put the porn away, put the magazines, or can I get brought the Vaseline away? I can't, I can't do that for you, right? But what I can do is not only pray for you or give you advice and all that, I wanna reach you. There's something that is in your life that is preoccupying your time. Oh man. There is something in your life that is preoccupying or trying to preoccupy your time. I got more to share. <laughs> Look out for part two. It's not gonna be enough for this one video. Look out for part two.